Platypus need to eat a third of their body weight in food every single night. That's an awful lot of armored phantoms to find in the dark. With the net in place, all they need to do now is wait. Armored phantoms are the best AFK necromancy experience in the game right now, but they're pretty complicated. So what I'm going to do in this guide is go through the best perks, the best inventory setup, the best action bars to use with different auras, all of that so that you can get those rates yourself and you know how the method works. I'll also give some discounted options for people who maybe can't afford the best possible perks in the game. Before all of that, there are two items that you're going to need to obtain. The first is the platypus pet, or as I like to call it, the fourth conjure. This is a summoning familiar that blocks entities, so sort of like your character will block certain things from walking by, the platypus will stop enemies from walking on its particular square. This is great at phantoms because it allows us to group them better and make it so only one attacks us at a time and we can survive. The second item is optional and I haven't seen a single person talking about it so far. If you've seen my short about Morven's secret slayer rewards, you know vaguely of black crystals. The crystal of reduced healing was recently nerfed so it doesn't function the same way, but there's another crystal we're going to take advantage of. This is the Black Crystal of Melee Weakness. The crystal makes you take 25% more damage from melee attacks. At Phantoms, this means you get increased Prayer Restore and higher DPS with Berserker's Fury Relic, assuming you can survive. We'll use this in some of our loadouts, but don't worry, if you don't want to use it, you don't need to get it. Next, let's just go over the basic setup. There are a bunch of different auras that you can use at Phantoms. The most chill AFK aura is the Penance aura. With the Penance aura, you don't need to worry about prayer and can AFK indefinitely without worry. It will get you about 30 to 90k less experience per hour compared to other auras, but it's well worth it in my opinion. The downside is if you don't have enough aura refreshes and can't sustain it indefinitely, then you'll need to use some other options in your loadouts. If you do, you can have comfy 8 hour trips and get awesome experience rates. If you're not just using penance, then we're going to do something called aura cycling, basically going through different auras on a cycle so there's always something available for you. If we use this method, you'll need to take holy aggro overload potions, while if we use just penance aura, you need to take regular aggro overload potions. For my inventory loadout, I start with an enhanced Excalibur and an ancient elven ritual shard. The Excalibur helps when setting up, and the Elven Ritual Shard helps sustain prayer with non-penance aura methods. Next, I have Potion Reservoirs, which auto-consume potions for much better AFKing, and then the Black Crystal of Melee Weakness. If you can't survive with this, I would take the Reduced Healing Crystal instead, and if you still can't survive, then just leave it out entirely. At higher levels, with my exact setup and action bars, it should be okay unless you get really bad RNG. Next is the Holy Wrench and Penance Powder. These are helpful for prayer sustain. You can also take Renar Incense Sticks, but they weren't buying for 100k when I was making this video, and that just wasn't worth it to me. If you run out of prayer, you will die very quickly here. Next are my Holy Aggro Overloads. Place them with regular Aggro Overloads if you're using the penance aura. I then have drop placeholders, a slayer cape to teleport to the raptor and then run to the crypt, ectoplasm to help with setups if I want, and a gem bag and spring cleaner for additional drop help. You'll definitely want the spring cleaner to alk all the salvage drops as this is the majority of the GP from this method. We'll also bring some uncharged XP capacitor 5000s which are another big bulk of the money here. These add about 5 million GP per hour if you take them. After that, I have a thumbs up for this video, and then Lanthodime Incense Sticks so the potions last longer, and a Restore Flask to help with lower prayer. If you aren't bringing the Black Crystal, you'll want a few less overloads and a few more restores. My gear is pretty straightforward. I use full tier 90 power armor and tier 90 weapons. If you have the tier 95 weapons, bring them instead. I have the Zut Cape, which will be required for some optimal bars, but there are other bars without it that are nearly as good, so you don't really need it. 
the absolute best bar with the inspiration aura doesn't use it at all. Then I have a salve amulet E, which boosts damage and accuracy against undead by 20%. This is absolutely required because it boosts damage and therefore XP by so much. I then have a ring of death, which gives back small amounts of adrenaline when I kill a monster. This adds up and it's a big help, so I strongly encourage getting this ring. It'll also protect you if you do mess up and die, so you have some more time to teleport out. In my pocket slot, I bring a Scripture of Wen. This does a ton of AoE damage, and it has a bunch of small hits, which all have a chance to apply Death Mark to targets, making it the best book to use here. If you don't have it, you can use a Scripture of Full without the Black Crystal of Melee Weakness, or a God Book of your choice. Now I'll break down the perks that I have in my armor. First I'll do the best perks, and then some discounted alternatives. For your weapons, you want Aftershock 4, Precise 2, with Equilibrium 4, Ruthless 3. The discount alternative is Precise 6, Genocidal, instead of Aftershock. This will drop your XP per hour by about 100k, so if you can get Aftershock 4 in there, I would definitely do that first. For your armor, the best perks are Invigorating 4, Impatient 4, Biting 4, and Crackling 4, Relentless 5. You'll need to combo Undead Slayer with either Invigorating, Impatient, or Biting. I would also put Demon Slayer and maybe another perk with those two things for the best loadout. The discount alternative is to replace Biting 4 with Biting 2, Undead Slayer, and then Crackling 4, Relentless 5 with just Relentless 5. You should keep invigorating and impatient if possible. For our relic setup, we'll use Berserker's Fury, Fury of the Smalls, and Inspire Awe. If you're dying, you can replace Fury of the Smalls with Death Ward. Now I'm going to walk you through the hardest part of Phantoms, which is getting set up. Phantoms will pile you if you're not careful, so you'll have like a bunch attacking you at once, which will kill you. So we have a very specific method of getting there, getting the platypus in the right spot, and then attacking them so that we don't die. The first few times you do it, you're probably going to die, but eventually you'll get it down and it's really quite easy. I do it on mobile all the time. We actually have another player killing ghosts on this world, so that'll make it a little bit easier to group up. So if you're not confident, first thing you're going to do, basically, you see these ghosts, we're going to run past them on this side, so this area on the mini-map, right about there, and then you'll run through, and we'll end up right about here with phantoms on us, then you run over to this corner and call our platypus, and then we'll be set up. So first off, I have overloads on, then I turn on protect from magic, and I'll run through. Uh, at this spot, you can dive and surge through it, which is what I would usually do, but I'll just show you you can walk through. I'll be fine. Then right around here, you're going to want to switch to melee protect prayer. So I'll do that. And then I just walk through on the top here. I get to this section. I wait around here. I have a bunch of phantoms on me. Uh, if you first time, turning off auto-retaliate can help. Now that I have them on me, I'll click on this rock right there, and then call the platypus. And you'll see he walks out there, activate my Excalibur, and I can switch to Soul Split, I should be good to go. Now there's also, sometimes it won't be as clean as this, and so I have, you'll see here I have Blood Siphon on my bar, I'll often use that at the start just to get back to full health, for this next one who attacks me. I'm going to use Blood Siphon. You'll see I'll heal right up. I'm good to go then. Also, if you want, you can summon your Conjures before running out. So, you know, get that Ghost up, get the Skeleton up, Zombie up, and that'll help you stay alive. You'll get the healing from the Ghost. You'll hit more. That's really a great help if you're not super confident with it. I'm going to show you an example of things not going right. So when you do mess up, what to do about that. Really, you're going to have to teleport out and group again, usually. It's an example of a messier setup that's still salvageable. You'll see here, because I had auto-retaliate on, I actually attacked the wrong phantom at the start. 
it's hard to click on the exact phantom attacking you because their hitbox is actually often slightly under your character. So I tried to do that, but I messed up. What I do instead is I pull out a siphon, which heals me up. So even though I'm taking those special attacks, I don't outright die. And then eventually I'm able to get the aggro back on the correct phantom and I'm good to go from there. Oftentimes, really just the best method if you really mess it up, phantom doesn't set up right, two are attacking you, just teleport out and try again. Assuming you're doing long trips, that won't have a huge impact on your XP per hour. Once I'm in the right spot, I make sure I have Soul Split on and Sorrow, the tier 95 necromancy prayer. You can use the tier 99 prayer with Penance Aura, but you're going to have increased prayer drain, so if you're using any other aura, it's going to be a real issue and you have a much better chance of dying and it's a lot less AFK, so I'd stick to that tier 95 prayer. Assuming you're not using Penance, you're going to want to make sure your powder is on as well, and then your potion reservoir, book of when, and aura. What I want to go over next is the different auras you can use and the different action bars that you should use for those situations, because depending on what aura you have, a certain action bar might perform better than another. First up, my favorite aura here, the Penance Aura. I love this one just because it's so AFK and it cuts down on supply costs since you don't need Penance Powder. If you have the Zut Cape and every Adrenaline Boost I've gone over, then the best bar for you is Death Skulls, Soul Strike, Soul Sap, Scythe, and Touch of Death. As long as you aren't hitting your adrenaline cap frequently, this bar is the best for almost every aura. If you don't have the Zuck Cape, you'll want to use Soul Strike, Scythe, Soul Sap, and Touch of Death. I found this bar outperformed the bar with Scythe in the first spot the majority of the time, and offered better survivability with the Black Crystal. Next is the Inspiration Aura. This aura gives you 0.5% adrenaline for every monster an attack hits. When you're AoEing Slayer monsters like this, it's a massive amount of adrenaline. Because of that, the Death Skulls bar caps out at 100% adrenaline too often and actually underperforms compared to the other options. I found both the Strike Scythe Sap bar and the Scythe Strike Sap bar perform similarly. The Strike First Bar had less near-death experiences, but you should be fine with either bar. I did find the Scythe First got like 10k more experience per hour, but that was within the margin of error of testing, so I'm not sure which one's really better. It's possible to get over 1.6 million XP per hour using either of these bars at a high level. If you're aura cycling, then use the Inspiration Aura first. The second best aura is the Majorat aura. It gives a 5% damage buff. The downside is it has a 23 hour cooldown. If you're planning to do longer trips, don't cycle it in right away. The Death Skulls bar is best with this aura, and then the Soul Strike first bar is best if you don't have the Zut Cape. I'll go over the ideal aura cycle at the end of the video so you get the best order to put this in. The next aura I like to use is the Dark Magic Aura. It causes a small necromancy bleed on some attacks, but they add up and increase your kills per hour by about 10 to 15. For the Dark Magic Aura, use the Death Skulls bar, or the Strike bar if you don't have the cape. Then there's Supreme Invigorate. This aura gives 10% adrenaline back whenever you use an ultimate ability. It only helps with the Death Skulls bar, but it's definitely worth adding if you have it because it'll increase kills by about 15 per hour. The Equilibrium Aura also gets an honorable mention. It doesn't increase XP per hour very much, but it does make healing more consistent, and it's a good fill-in aura if you don't own every aura on this list. For cycling auras, I suggest the following method. For your action bar, we're actually going to have Death Skulls, Soul Strike, Scythe, Sap, and then Touch on the bar. We're going to use the Inspiration Aura first, which will use that Soul Strike first attack bar, but Death Skulls will actually never go off because of the way the bar is ordered. Then after Inspiration's up, you'll swap to the Dark Magic Aura and then just swap Scythe and Sap on your action bar. So that one switch is all you need. At that point, Death Skulls will begin going off and you'll get that higher experience rate. 
After Dark Magic is up, just turn on Supreme Invigorate and you're good to go. After that, Majorat Aura, also good to go. You can boost Majorat up if you aren't going to go for you know four or five hours. After that, then go back to the Inspiration Aura and make that swap back, Scythe and Sap swap places on your bar. Then back to Dark Magic, make that swap again, Supreme Invigorate, and then you'll use the Penance Aura because Majorat's on cooldown. Another alternative at this point, maybe just go outside and enjoy the day.